In 2019, Chris and Charlie Wheatcraft purchased Indy Cylinder Head, arguably the world's main manufacturer of Mopar engines and high-performance engine parts. They are currently in expansion mode by updating tooling and finishing out a brand new facility that is located in Xenia, Ohio. I recently made the trip up to check out what they had going on. And for those of you that don't know Charlie and Chris Wheatcraft, Charlie is on the right and Chris is on the left. But those that, of you that race Mopars know them very well. They've been in, how long have you guys been racing? Forever, Chris? No, oh, two. Two yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would spend, uh, I mean, He's when, I was racing and everything, you know, I was lying about my age and when I was racing. So, right. And then, uh, obviously when we first met, I drug her out there and it's just been over since then. So, 30 so, years there. 30 so. years. <laughs> so it's not that you guys bought uh, a, a racing business. You were already in the racing business. You just, just bought another piece of it. Right? I was already contributing to this place before we ended up <laughs> right. thinking about buying it. So. Right. So you started running Indy Motors pretty pretty fast off, correct? I started pouring concrete and working my butt off and everything so I could afford Indy Motors. Okay. So And then I used that money and everything and, and that portion of my business success in order to to fund my habit, mm -hmm. you know. So it's been and it was it's a long time on Indy because I think I pretty much always had Indy. Yeah. 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 So you met Russ. I bought my first set of heads probably in uh, man, it had to have been ninety five. So Russ Flagel started Indy, and you met Russ through that process, correct? Yes. Just as a customer. Yeah. Yeah. Just as a customer. And then you guys kind of got roped into to working with it and and kind of being the. The, the poster people of it, really, because you guys were at the races all the time, fronting all yeah. the new stuff, correct? Correct. Yeah. 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 So at what point did you realize that you were going to purchase Indy Cylinder Heads? When we said, oh, crap, what are we going to do for parts? Okay. So, <laughs> like, if it, you know, you don't know if it's going to auction off. You don't know if it's going to close down, but they were done. So, so, so Russ got sick, for the Russ people that don't sick, know, so. and, and he was, you know, as we all have to do when we have an aging business, we have to figure out how it goes on past our, Absolutely. our life. And they did such a good job of developing developing product. Uh, that awesome legacy product. there is going to go on for a long time. So, um, so you guys have taken the whole shop out of Indy. Um, it's still operating a little bit over there, but the goal is to bring it to Xenia, where, where you are here, yes. where we are here today. Correct. 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 So it'll remain Indy, though. Correct. It'll be, remain yes. Indy Cylinderhead. Okay. It's not changing the name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's yeah. no reason to change something that's not broke. So. And you guys... And, and he's known for the products, so... Right. It's, it's, we're not changing anything. Today. And you guys have brought over the key employees, so it's not like you got rid of everybody. You brought right. the key guys over. So Kenny's done the building for years, correct? Correct. correct. And he's over here, same guy's building everything. Yep. And you brought a lot of the key. Who are the other key people that you so brought over? we got Doug that does a lot with all the heads as mm -hmm. far as, um, well, repairs and actual assembly on the heads. Mm -hmm. um, Deanna taking care of sales for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that she came too. Um, and some of the smaller ones that currently kind of just everybody in. that was there when we first acquired the company and everything is still there it's now. Still, mm -hmm. yeah. So they're all willing to stay there and everything. And as long as we're in production over in Indianapolis and we're developing a process here at the new facility, everybody's still all in. We haven't lost a, a single individual and everything since the acquisition. So, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're bringing on some new people and we're just trying to build up a team just kind of around the product line that's going to protect all of us for, you know, for the future, really. Mm -hmm. So. So speaking of the future, what does the future of Indy Cylinder Head look like? It looks good. It really <laughs> does. I mean, if we can start getting the products or the parts that we need to finish products to finish the parts that we want to get out and stuff that's just the whole different that's the same thing with so we're in so world. we're in 2022 and yeah. everybody's waiting on parts that's the, you guys have the same issues yeah. however um you guys actually own a foundry to kind of help with some of those issues correct, correct? so in yeah, in, in the acquisition of indy it wasn't just a a a engine company i mean it was actually a foundry involved foundry in that correct how did that work well the foundry actually we own it but we lease it to a company that actually does this stuff. Mm -hmm. so it's not technically Indy's foundry. I mean, we own it, but we lease it to somebody else and we buy the products back from them. But you have first shot at the other yeah, cash yeah. works. They're, they're awesome yeah, people. Yeah. So they work with you if you've got some things you need to change because everybody knows you've got patterns that you all go by. Mm -hmm. So if something needs to change, it's you've got that close network right there that you can go in and say, okay, we got to do something here. This is mm -hmm. shifting or, you know, this little things that are in there. And that's it's easier to do than not trying to reach out to somebody in California. Right. You know, where you can't really 
point to it and say this is the issue we're having. So it works out really good and they do a lot of our products and it's very nice products. So at the moment you're transitioning everything over and trying to streamline everything and, and improve the manufacturing process that I can see out there. But are there gonna be new products coming along after that gets done? There will be some. Um, I, I think it's gonna be a couple of years before we start putting some new ones yeah, out there. Yeah, it takes there. a while we to get everything moved, get yeah. All of our stuff done right, um, inventoried, up where we want it. Mm -hmm. So I want, I want it like it used to be where you can call up and just get it that day. So. <laughs> well, the reality of, of, you know, we've been involved with it and stuff for 30 plus years and buying products and stuff. But until you sat down and seen everything that them guys made and developed and stuff just out of, just out of necessity along the way, the product line is extensive and it'll blow your mind. Right. Just all the parts and pieces and everything that it takes to make. And, you know, so trying to, trying to make a move and then update and, and restructure and uh, invest in tooling and processes and just the product line alone that they had, it doesn't leave time right now with today's current situation to develop anything new. And, you know, and everybody, we're trying to get the original products up and going just to, so we can survive. Right. You know, the support has been unreal, you know, because I mean, uh, everybody's been shopping, everybody's been buying, you know, and everything. But it's it's been bad timing and everything for us because it's left us with limited opportunity to capitalize because we're caught in the middle of move and trying to redevelop an update. Right. And, and, and uh, product the, shortage. The only yeah. thing good is we didn't try with to the product like shortage is everybody else is having the same situation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it gives us a chance to, to try to get things going and everything while everybody just kind of muddling along and everything, trying to get caught up. And, and we tried you know. to make sure we had product before we would move it to a new machine. However, some of the machining over there was so old, once it died, your hands were tied. So you're back to, you had to do it there. Yeah. Uh, a lot of our stuff right now, even though we're here reprogramming or have the new machines and stuff, it's still being done in Indy. Mm -hmm. It's still being produced. So it's not like we're stopping and saying, okay, we're not doing any more until it's programmed here. We're, we're trying not to do that. Um, right. Some things have happened that way only because it's out of our hands when something breaks down and you can't get the parts to fix a machine. So, so it's not only getting parts to do the motors, it's getting it's parts, parts to get the machines. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've got a, we've got a situation right now where we had a, a, you know, a part break on the machine that actually holds a tool, you know, and then you can't even get the part and everything. And originally they were saying six to eight months. Well, yeah. without that tool holder and everything and holding the tool, that machine was useless. Mm -hmm. it, we can't do anything with that machine. For eight no, months, yeah. It doesn't matter what product it right. is. It doesn't matter what. Yeah. I mean, it's not even a good place to plug in a hose and get air off. <laughs> right. It. I mean, right. So, you know, we you got to kind of diversify some things and make a, you know, a seat of the pants decision just along the way, just for the simple fact of doing what's good yeah. for the situation and, and move on. Mm -hmm. Um the idea is to get things updated enough over there in Indianapolis and us be able to manufacture from both locations. And we'll be trying to get ahead of all this lead time stuff and everything. And, and hopefully be in the catbird seat and be in the control of our own destiny, manufacturing parts that nobody else can get. Right. So that'd be great. And that's what we're shooting for. So what we'll do is once the trucks are unloaded, uh, the castings and everything will unload in here and we'll stage all of our castings to this area and then they'll start the machining processes and everything through here. Now these machines here, these were John Force's old machines that you uh, bought? Actually or? we've got one that was Force's machine and this is a big one here. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one's capable of doing, you know, anything from castings, cylinder heads, and uh, blocks to um, even making a lot of uh, billets so we can do right. billet blocks of billet cylinder heads and stuff here in the future you know it, uh, with this machine here and it's it's got a you know 100 cad 50 uh, tool holder and everything and it's how do the billet blocks figure into the marketplace? Are they way more expensive? Uh, yeah, they're quite a bit more expensive. And, uh, you know, there's a need for it, but uh, 
right now we've got a big enough need just in just with our blocks alone with the in the marketplace just to supply them people with a, a casting and everything mm -hmm. you know a lot of the street hemis and uh, even our boosted uh, high performance stuff and everything that cast block and everything is going to be a really good block for the needs so so as far you know, as the machines we're capable of doing probably you know once everything's programmed and up and running to its full potential you know that that thing's capable of doing you know two blocks a day right to you know possibly as much as 10 to 15 blocks a week right so it's it's going to be a big game changer for us as far as these machines over here you just what do you run the, the cast stuff through those so a lot of these uh dmgs and everything here these will do some of our intake manifolds some of our other parts mainly they're going to do a lot of our head porting and, and a lot of our finish work okay so um, and there, there's four of the dmgs there that are set up to run cylinder heads and do head porting so previously indy was using what 20 year old machinery to, to do what they did uh it was a lot of it was 30 or 40 40 was it that now. old i mean it, there's stuff that was in there from the 80s and some of it even from the late 70s so so the goal is once you get this set up will you be able to do more volume on it or just a more yeah quality we of actually part? these machines have always been used just to do porting mm -hmm. and there's we you know with some updated software and the tools and everything nowadays they're capable of doing a lot more mm -hmm. so you know we're going to be able to really crank up and uh, do some things a little bit differently and stuff just with some technology and some updates mm -hmm. But as the castings and stuff come in the rear and they come through the machining process, you know, everything is designed that it's going to go through the manufacturing process here. And then as it gets further through the building, it's going to, you know, slowly get closer to finishing that process. And right. It's going to work its way to where it's complete and cleaner as it gets through the building. So I'm at this area here still kind of under construction just for the simple fact that uh, we're using it for staging as we're bringing things over mm -hmm. from the other building. Mm -hmm. And uh, But we've already got a layout where everything's going to be. That's why the electrical drops and everything's here. So uh, the price... So a, lot of this, a lot of this equipment is going to be here, but we've got all of our, our cylinder head machines and everything to do all of our, our guides and seats machines are going to go over in the back. And then, you know, once once it goes through here for final assembly and everything, we're gonna have this area gets set up for all of our hot tanks and uh, our furnaces, our welders, mm -hmm. and all of our repairs and everything will be done over here. So the way you're operating now is you still have a small facility at Andy producing product, make yeah. sure everybody's got what they need yeah. so and transitioning the, the over best, to here. The best way to put it is we're gonna keep the facility open at Indy and everything while mm -hmm. we develop a, a foolproof process here. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna be able to run from two locations and everything to get caught up on production mm -hmm. and uh, you know try to help everybody else, you know, navigate with the shortages that are out there right now so is and this a one-year plan or a five-year plan or? to program and tool and fixture all the mm -hmm. new equipment why we're still up and running over in indianapolis so so is this a one-year plan or a five-year plan or how does this transition into full production well a lot of it is i mean we're able to except for our blocks um Pretty much, we're able to go in full production here. Our blocks and our repairs, mm -hmm. you know, is the only thing that we're not to do. Right. We're right now we're working on the blocks to be able to program and machine them and everything here. Mm -hmm. um, that's literally, you know, if you become next week and everything, that's what they're working on. They're going to be running blocks in here and stuff next week. But uh, and this will be a full production facility and everything minus the repairs that are over there in indianapolis right and we're going to keep that over there till the end and that's be the last portion of the move when we talk so, about uh repairs that's the cast iron repair correct well that, the whole all yeah. the arrowhead stuff mm -hmm. you know you remember all the original arrow right so it will stay over there the cast iron repairs even the aluminum repairs all the you know there's still some high-end teams and everything that bring 
you know, their blocks and cylinder heads over there. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's one of the best repair facilities in the country. Right. And that's how they really got started. Okay. Um, and that reputation and everything, it just built off of, uh, then they started, produ you know, producing and, and uh, perfecting their own product line. You right. Filling the niche. Yeah. 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 So, uh, you know, they built the whole business out of necessity, mm -hmm. you know people needed their stuff fixed so that's where they started right and then the mopar world needed a good set of cylinder heads and yeah everything. And yeah you know, they were you know they definitely knew uh knew what was uh, needed and they knew where the niche markets were and how to do it so yeah, they, yeah. and they knew how to do yeah. it yeah um this area here is where all the finish equipment and everything is so you know from the balancer to you know even uh you know, over there we got our our, uh, our hones. You got your line hone and mm -hmm. everything here. The line bore there in the back. Our decking machine and everything back here. Mm -hmm. So we're we're able to actually once the blocks are up and running, we're literally able to finish everything right here. So uh, there's 48 builds and everything. Every one of these tickets and everything on this wall is all staging mm -hmm. for builds in-house builds right so this is our builder stuff so we're having trouble getting you know valves and um you know camshafts and pistons mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of lead time on that stuff mm -hmm. and that's one thing that we try to emphasize and everything we realize everybody wants to build their own combination they want to try to do things and stuff their own way but with all the years that that any cylinder head has had doing this with their products. If we'd stick to the things that we know that work and everything, we can get the stuff a lot faster and cut some of these lead times down, you know? And uh, if there's any such thing as a, a crate engine necessity and everything, it's now. Right. And the thing is, is we can do a 572, you know, Hemi <laughs> in a crate package that is, readily available right you know but everybody wants to change maybe a little bit different camshaft mm -hmm. and there's somebody wants and so then it changes maybe valve to piston location and everything slows and, down and from everything there. slows down <laughs> yeah. from there right so and my thing is with the with the options that we have available you know if we kind of let the people here kind of guide you on things to to do these builds even if you decide you want to build it yourself you need to build it with kind of our our package right and things are a little bit more available right you know just from all the past experiences and uh if you know i just say it's like taking pulling the spoke out of the wheel you know you pull a spoke out and make one little subtle change and everything and then you better be prepared for the ride yeah because <laughs> that's basically what you've done right so once we acquired the business we you know we seen that there was a, a big need to update some of these blocks and um and the, everybody that's in the business their their castings and things are probably 30 you know 30 plus year old equipment mm -hmm. so we set out just to do new core boxes and um new tooling and everything and this was something that russ had originally set out and already started but we had us you know we got a chance to take a second look at it and everything and and just put a an updated version together and stuff and pick up where he left off so it's called the so, Indy x block and what makes it special well it's got a lot of you see all this and the extra reinforcing right. and stuff and everything in the lifter valley um, and it's all there for you know a lot of the higher horsepower and the more people are, are building these things you know that are let's call them you know street engines mm -hmm. <laughs> so we want to develop a higher horsepower block and put a water jacket in it and everything and these guys be able to run a boosted engine and everything on the street so it's basically a and pro mod block that, yeah, that you run is, in the street it is. yeah I mean, you you could run this in you know a series of different classes and everything but you, you can get it in a couple different ways you can get it in a solid version which just is this this one here is an actual solid version but we do have them water jacketed and everything to where you can get it in the water block to where you can actually run it on the street. So is that a low deck or a high deck? Uh, this is actually a, a tall deck block. Yes. Okay. This is a, um, 
the original standard standard deck. So are you going to make a short and, deck also? Yes, we are. Yeah. Okay. There will be a, a, a low deck option also. Now, as far and as that'll be in water and in solid option. So this is literally so the, the biggest throat. change on a lot of this is the way it's just redone and you know and all the main webbing and everything the the way the casting and the core boxes and everything was designed mm -hmm. so and it just gives you a, a lot beefier main webbing and everything here and still leaves plenty of wall thickness and everything for us to get water jacket and stuff around the cylinder walls so is this ready to ship now this is the first uh, no, this, this is the one, first one correct this is going to be uh one, it'll be a, it'll be the second one the, one of the first ones and stuff we done is a a pro charge hemi piece and it actually went in uh charlie 70 cuda mm -hmm. so and we've been running that and everything and knock on wood everything's been working out really well so this will be uh this will be the second one and everything going together and we have actually got these in production and castings are coming in and everything weekly now so. so people can go ahead and order these yeah, if they want we're, them. we're in the development process and everything and programming and machining and everything all in-house and getting this casting to where it'll be run over here in cool. the new facility so i'd like to personally thank chris and charlie for opening up their not yet finished new facility for this tour as you can see, this is quite the undertaking, and I commend them for this monumental task of taking Indy Cylinder Head to the next level and into the future. If you like this video, hit the like button below, and please, please, please hit the subscribe to Mopar TV button so we can grow this channel. It's absolutely free to you. This has been Robert Wolf reporting, and until next month, I'll see you on the pages of Mopar Collector's Guide Magazine.